Amen. Can we pick our Bibles and pick a text as we stand up as the custom of the bride is worldwide? Hebrews chapter 12. Let's conclude the message we took like Sunday. We pick our text from Hebrews chapter 12 and we looked at verse 1. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Wherefore, see we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you. Be seated. Part three of the message we looked at the besetting sin. All I'm attempting to do is to wake up somebody to see a reason for you to move forward in your Christian life and to watch those things that bring you back. I preach a message that I call the enemies of revival. And things we should watch to keep the revival fire on. All we try to do as ministers of God is to keep you going. Keep you going. Satan is in the business of pulling us backwards. And I've emphasized that he does it in several ways. But the one that is more effective that cuts you up from God is the one that he will cause you, a true child of God, to have problem with your God, your heavenly father. That's why he speaks about the cloud of witnesses. There are witnesses in the Bible that we are supposed to learn from their own stories, from their experiences, so that we can have a better spiritual life. One thing about it is when you begin to backslid, I've said it before that no Christian that is truly born again, one abominable sin that a Christian, that is even a shame to be mentioned among believers, is adultery and fornication. Now, it is expected that when you are born again, you go far from that abomination. Because there's a scripture that rings in your ear. Ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that you're a temple of the Holy Ghost? The Spirit of God that dwells in you. If a man defile God's temple, he say he will God destroy. You don't want to do anything that will defile you. You may vow. But you can say, Lord, if any man see my pants, Strike me dead that day. Unless I marry. Praise God. Hey, this makes me remember something. No, 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 no. I will say it. Listen. Because somebody called me. Maybe you are, you are, you are watching me now. How, before you marry, well, you are making your confession. From outside Lagos. How that you marry the man but that you did not, in the course of your explanation to me, you just made this statement. But that you did every other thing, oh, but just that you did not have intercourse before you married. When I, you touch, you touch, you say, you touch yourselves, but he didn't enter. It's not only her. It happens. There is a way you begin to justify yourself. We didn't commit fornication. After all, there was no intercourse. We were only touching. We only touch. Let me tell you. Open Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. 1, 2, 3. But the answer is in verse 3. 
Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch. Neither shall ye what? Touch it. Lest ye die. So, you are not only to, not only eat, you know, even touch. If you didn't know before, don't allow him to touch you. Tell him, God, he said, don't touch. Not only eat, oh. Praise the Lord. Will Abraham say that you are not even entitled to kiss until you are pronounced husband and wife? So don't touch. Now, now, I was saying something. Before you see a believer, therefore, that descends to the level that he will now go into believer. Bible by the side of the bed, oh. Sticker, I'm untouchable on the door. The sign of the cross is hanging somewhere, oh. Pillar of fire is hanging by the side. And yet, he can take a woman he has not married in that same room and sleep with her. It's not that day he descended to that level. That is the final conclusion for you to know that the man is now spiritually dead. Before you do that, there is this besetting sin. You go to backsliding. Small, 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 small. Small, 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 small. Number one, it will cut your way, your prayer life. It's taking small, 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 and you will justify it. You see? Now, now that one has stopped. Then, then other things will be coming in. Other things will be coming in. Other things will be coming in. Let me tell you how you are going away from the Spirit of God. It's leaving you. Finally, it's leaving you. Just watch your spiritual level. Anytime those unbelieving music that you used to play in those days that you have left it, when you are your guided moment, when they are playing, just see yourself. Before you know what they are singing is somewhere, you're already echoing it, echoing it. Before you realize it, I what am I doing? The one that realizes it is the one that still has small life. The one you see yourself. They say, Kai, you know the song where they sing so. And you begin to say, eh, what is wrong in it? <laughs> you don't die, go. Because I read it, it is only a dog that goes back to his vomit. We are not dogs. Hallelujah. So, so what is the solution? For anybody that has backslidden so far, you want to go forward, something has made you spiritually to crash. What is the solution? What is the prevention also? Hallelujah. I said, watch your spiritual grab. Watch it. Jesus Christ, this is the solution. He said, watch and pray. The first thing to watch is watch your own life. Are you progressing? You are going backward or you are stagnated? The spirit of God is dynamic. It's not static. Every day you must be better and better and better. When you begin to live on yesterday's testimony, you are stagnated. It's the same yesterday, today and forever. I know preachers, especially in this entire message, they, all they say is, oh, when we first believe, oh, when we first believe, we turn the whole country upside down. What happened now? 
Why are you not turning it again upside down continually? Backslider, you don't even know it. So, Jesus Christ, number one, he said, watch and pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. He said, mortify. The emphasis is, mortify your members. Mortify. Check it. How do you check it? Apostle Paul say, I say, he say if I call it, he say, I die daily. Apostle Paul say that, that he puts his body under. Hallelujah. He subjects his body, his flesh. Watch it. When you are beginning to go carnal, you will know. Don't you ever justify your estate when your conscience is speaking to you or a fellow brother is speaking to you. Ah, brother, why are you doing this now? You're a Christian. Don't justify it. Keep immediately see it because, see, you cannot know your estate. If you are spiritual, somebody will tell you. If you are carnal, somebody also will tell you. Don't fight somebody because he's checking you. We are supposed to check one another. Why are you talking like this? Eh? The way they talk, no good. Hey, Father, forgive me. I beg, brother, they pray for me. Don't begin to face them and say, and say, hey, you, oh, you, you are claiming to be spiritual, Abby. Hey, leave me alone. Leave me alone. You are dead. I don't know it. Now die, they die, go. You remain burial for you. And when I say remain buried, that's very soon you will be forgotten that you were ever a Christian before. Hallelujah. James chapter 4. You read it from verse 4 to verse 10. We read it. We are, he is emphasized there. He said, draw nigh to God. And he, God, will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God. I say, the opposite of that scripture is Draw far from God and God will draw far from you. And remember, without God, you are nothing. We are nothing. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Remember, the Bible speaks about the backslider at heart. The emphasis is your heart. You begin to fall. Your fall begins from your heart, from your mind. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. He said, keep thy heart. Let's read it. With all diligence. Keep thy heart. With all diligence. That is, that is, it's not small, small. Watch it constantly. For out of that your heart are the issues of life. The devil gets your heart. Then you will lose your conscience. I saw some sisters, particularly a sister. Even there is another one self still in this church. You know, you know. I love this social network, this Facebook. Oh, that is where you will know who is who. Eh? Watch the discussion they post there. A spiritual person will be using that opportunity to talk spiritual things. And a carnal person will use that opportunity to be talking carnal things. Eh? Come and watch. The day I saw one sister in this church, where I know, me and my wife, we look at her, we were shocked, sitting down there with trousers. My wife said, so a human being can pretend to this level? Another sister that was here prophesying, a few days ago, I was just saying, ah, this sister, where is she now? Because for so many years, we have not seen her again. She was supposed to be in school somewhere, in Quara State, and then like that, the parents withdrew, and then I asked the parents one day, the parents, she, she said the parents said she should stop coming to Bride Assembly. They were all here before. One of them was even a deacon. The father was a deacon in this church before. And then, when I went to meet her, why are you people not coming to church? Even your daughter, your daughter told me, you refused her to come. He was denying the girl just appear. I said, see your daughter here. She told me you refused her, that she should not come to bride. Do you have anything against the church? Well, if you see that girl in Facebook, oh, 
called Jesus. And they told you that that girl can spell the name Jesus. Before you say she's a Christian. Now, yet, a gifted sister. Yet, holy like a sister. Ah, dog, na dog. Pig, na pig. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We see it. That you descend to that level. That is, it didn't start what it started small, 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 small. Then before you know what, you are finally dead and you are buried. Spiritually speaking. And all of us that we have stood at this altar, including myself, and we have messed up Satan, exposed the enemy, cast out devils, don't see your deliverance. Listen, you don't need a prophet to tell you that the enemy is having an assignment on you. That's why when we fall, our fall is always yakata. Because it will package you, it will package you, package you, then give you a slide. So that you become very valueless. Watch me. Write it down. Quote it. Hold this tape. This man you are seeing here. I have decided to go to heaven. Nothing will stop me. No witch. No wizard. No man. No woman. No condition. No situation. Nothing. Why will I say that? I am saying it also knowing that the scripture says, he who thinks he stands, take it lest he fall. I am not saying so because I am standing. No. I am saying so because I have a heart that has made up. I am made up to go to heaven and I will walk towards it. Not because I'm a Christian. This decision is not today. Oh. You only know me now as a preacher. You don't know my Christian character because you have not been close to me. I have always been a Christian. From the day I found out who Christ was. Nobody that has come across me since I gave my life to Christ will say any negative thing concerning me. Lie, lie. Lie, lie. Decided to go to heaven. And that is why I am out to show you the way to heaven. Whatever I'm telling you is what I practice. When I say if you don't guide your heart, you will fall. It's because I have faced temptations. I have found myself. One unbeliever, but that is why. When they invite me, I hardly go. Before you know what, you find yourself among them. Your mates, your colleagues. Then they sing one song that you used to love so much before. Then before you know what. Hey! I say, hey! Abomination, Holy Ghost fire. What is this? It happened recently. As pastor now, I said, Hi, I said, I'm a liar. Then, small time. Before I know what, I enter again. Hey, what's this? What's this nonsense? Okay, I carry my phone. Let me be busy with phone. Maybe. While I was on the phone, I was. <laughs> so I tapped my wife. I say, I beg, <laughs> let's leave this place. Where <laughs> they go? So you can imagine. Praise the Lord. When the Bible says evil communication corrupts good man. I'm telling you. I begin to hate myself. Descend to this level, singing those. You know, you know, I was a, a DJ. So so anytime they are playing those old school, you know, our time. Our music then was more meaningful than this one now. The one they play now. What are they saying? What are they saying? I don't even know. So thank God. Nothing in this modern music is attractive to me. Yahoo, 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 Yahoo. What are they saying? So those olden day songs, oh, 
oh, those philosophical songs that those demon possessed musicians were singing in those days. Eh, eh. Hallelujah. Where I went, they were singing this song. Give me your unconditional love. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, so when I sing out now, all of them, they are, they, if they say I continue, they for join me. They for join me. They for join me. We are past that level. Praise the Lord. So keep your heart. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. It's in your thinking. In Proverbs 23, verse 7. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. And Matthew 12, 34, and verse 35, it says, Out of the abundance of the hearts, the mouth speaketh. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There was a scripture that I was considering, but let's see what the Bible says. We as Christians, it's a scripture there, First Corinthians chapter 6. Listen. Now, now First Corinthians chapter 6. Let's, let's read it from verse 9 first. Now, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate, no abusers of themselves with mankind, no thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, no revelers, no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now, now, none of this, all of us, all of us, this was our situation, one thing or the other, we were living, swimming, eating and drinking it every day. Verse 11, verse 11, then he said, and such we are some of us in time past. But ye are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. Now, now, if you are washed, praise the Lord. If we are washed, it means that cannot be our identity anymore. I was pondering on that until Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12. A statement there was quickened to me. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 12. This is how he put it. He said, there is a generation that appear in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. You see? Let's read it again. Apostle Paul said that we are washed. But here is the Spirit of God saying that there is a generation that appear in their own eyes self-righteousness. And yet that generation is not washed from their filthiness. You have done water baptism. Yet you are still there with your filthy lifestyle. There's a generation. You are pure in your eyes. You justify what you are doing as it doesn't matter. That generation is now. The present generation of believers, Christians. Why are they not washed? They are not washed because they don't know what it is to be used to wash. Listen, church. There are two washings you are supposed to wash. The washing of your past sins. Your sins. The washing of your past sins. Remission of sins. Through that water baptism. Your sins are remitted. Then, in your Christian life now, daily, there is another washing. That washing is called the process of sanctification. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 27 to 27 tells us that washing is the washing of the water by the word. What is the water of the spirit that washes us? It is the word of God. The washing of the water by the word. The psalmist says, wash me and I will be clean. Hallelujah. You also understand when the Bible says, Jesus, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. In verse 5, John chapter 3, he said, except a man be born of the spirit and of the water, he cannot enter. Which water? Praise the Lord. It is the water of the word. The water of the word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And we can learn a lesson from Naaman, the Syrian general. In 2 Kings chapter 5, here was a gentile that was leprous. We know what that story is there for. But we can learn more than that. That story, Naaman, is a type of the gentle bride of Jesus Christ. Cut off from Israel, uncircumcised, alienated. Before the Jew, we are leprous. All our sins upon us, God looks at us as leprous people. And God was using the story of Naaman to tell us how that through seven church ages he will use his word and wash his bride seven church ages seven times. And remember, it was by the word of a prophet. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God, the word of the Lord only comes to the prophet. And when I say the word of God comes to the prophet, I don't mean level of prophecy. That's not what I mean. God has designed that he will lead his people by a prophet. Hallelujah. In the right hand of Jesus, Revelation chapter 1 verse 16, we are seven stars. And seven candlesticks and is speaking about his star messengers through whom he will lead his church get a bride for himself in every age typed by those seven chamberlains in the court of king Ahasuerus that produced Esther the queen so listen church there can never be perfection in this age and every other age outside of the message of the star messenger for that age. I repeat, there is no life anywhere else. There is no life anywhere else outside of the message of the messenger for that age. No life. Until you catch this revelation. You will just think that. Every man of God. Is a man of God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ told the Pharisees. He says. In vain. In vain do they do what? Do they worship me? Teach him for doctrine. Commandments of men. Commandments of men. There is no life, I repeat, there is nothing anywhere that can perfect anybody. Anywhere else, all they are teaching is just moral instructions. Listen, church. Amen. No life anywhere else. When anybody stands at the pulpit and tells you, don't smoke, 
don't drink, don't do this, don't do that, don't do it. It's not good. And even coins his voice to look like some holy voice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, see. God is a spirit, isn't it? He's a spirit. Amen. And he's everywhere at the same time. I just want to give you an example. He's everywhere at the same time. Eh? Hallelujah. He is everywhere at the same time. Therefore, it's expected that if you want to bring your sacrifice, eh, there should not be a, a particular place. But you know what? God told the children of Israel. He said, you will not offer your sacrifice in every gate. Gate na gate, Abi. Church na church, Abi. He said, you will only do that in the place where I have chosen to place my name there. If you go to another place and offer your sacrifice, no matter how beautiful it is, Hallelujah. It will not be accepted. Why? Because he, God, has chosen a particular place. I have preached a message and titled it God's Chosen Place of Worship. William Abraham also preached the same kind of, the same message, the same title. God's Chosen Place of Worship. Praise the Lord. Such that it's not even everywhere you should go and put your offering. It's not everywhere you should go and pay your tithes. It's not everywhere you enter and worship the Lord God of Israel. There is a place he determines where you should worship him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am called. God call me. I am called. God call me. I am called. God call you, eh? Is that what you are doing? You are working for God. Open John chapter 6. John chapter 6, verse 28, 29, and maybe verse 30. John chapter 6, verse 28. This, listen very well. Catch it very well. You that God call you to work for him. I'm saying this. Not necessarily for you sitting down here. But all those who may be watching us in our broadcast. God call me. God call me. Then said they unto him. What shall we do that we might walk the works of God? Jesus answered and said unto them. This is the work of God. That you believe on him whom he had sent. That's all. I want to work for God. How will I work for God? Believe on him whom he has sent. And with all vindications in this age, God has lifted a man with all vindication above any other person that claims a call in this age to fulfill Bible prophecies. God lifted the standard in this age. That man, William Marion Braham. You want to work for God anywhere you are, for God to accept your work, you must do it only according to him who God has sent. He sent him with a message. That is very deep. That is very deep. Let me tell you something. Why you are looking at me like like cinema? Listen. Why you are surprised? Think very well. Think very well. There are billions of people that are serving God in the whole world. Hindus, there are billions. 
uh, what do you call it? Buddhists, they are billions. Muslims, they are billions. Apart from other small, small, small ones. If you ask every one of you, they will tell you they are serving the living God. Hallelujah. Until Jesus Christ came and said, I am the way. Because he is the one whom God has sent. No man coming to the Father except by me. You try to get to God outside of Jesus Christ, you will never get it. Now, now, when we speak like this, they get angry with us. Do you understand? Think very well. Now, everybody say, Jesus, Jesus. Even Babala owner, Jesus now. Everybody, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then the same Jesus Christ came and said, the true worshippers, we worship him where? In spirit and in truth. So, you can worship God in the flesh. Eh? And you can also worship God in error. So, how do you determine whether you are in the truth or you are in error? His word is the truth. It's the Bible. And we use this Bible, therefore, to know if you are doing anything, preaching anything, contrary to this Bible, according to the warning of Apostle Jude, Apostle Paul, and all the rest, we can call your name on the basis of this scripture and say you are in error. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, you say you are believers, you are believers. The same thing that happened to Israel, they were followers of the Mosaic laws. Suddenly, he who God has sent appeared. They rejected him. Therefore, they remained in the condition that they were. Condemned and suffer all the things they suffer and they are still suffering till now. The same thing also. You that say you believe. You are following the apostolic doctrines. You are holding the Bible with all the interpretations and everything. Here you are again. So that a test for you. God fulfilled another scripture in our own time. Sent another person. You have rejected him. You have rejected righteousness. Naaman, leprous, came before the prophet. Like all of them, we are following the prophet William Abraham. What will happen? Naaman, without respect to persons, Send the servant, go and meet that man on the way. Go and dip yourself in the Jordan River seven times and your leprosy will go. Hallelujah. Neman, pride came in. And there are no rivers every, all other places. In Syria and everywhere that I will come to. Let me tell you, it is pride that is making these denominational juggernauts not to follow the message. And let me tell you, if Naaman did not enter that water, he will never have been cleansed. You will never receive the cleansing power until you take it to the message. Ask your neighbor, are you in the message? We shall continue next Sunday. God bless you. Can we stand up? God's attributes were manifested to his bride in this last age. We have caught a revelation by the last God's message. And we know who we are and what we are reserved for. Praise the Lord for the original life. The original sea, the original world, is what I believe. The son of man is within the seven seas, with the earth.
Hallelujah. 